so you can um, learn a few things and sell tip and uh, introduce them uh, to your customers. Um, so I believe you do carry uh, all the line, meaning the both the Argentinian line, which is the main one, as well as the Chilean one. So my name is uh, Baptiste Cuvelier. Um, I'm from France. Uh, the family in Bordeaux, we own several estates, the most renowned of which is Chateau Léoville Poiferré, which is second classified growth in Saint-Julien. It's, I would say, one of the top 10 Bordeaux, so very well-established, recognized uh, estate in Bordeaux. And uh, Cuvier Los Andes in Argentina is the new family project. What we are trying to do down there is uh, to create the Argentinian cousin of Chateau Leoville Poiferé. So that really set the standard for the wall operation. And um, as um, this is um, border work in Argentina, we get a lot of concentration. We get a big, bold wine with a very strong aging potential. So in order to come up with a full range of red, that's why I developed that range in Chile. Um, following an opposite direction, uh, aiming at producing wine that are easy to drink, uh, fruit forward, fun, uh, no oak, um, and just, you know, pleasure um, for a meal, to, to, to drink with a meal, to drink without food, just, just to enjoy and drink wine what we call in French a vin soif, a thirst wine. Um, so maybe uh, I will start with a Chilean project. Are you tasting this morning? No. No, all right. So you'll just be drinking what I say, poor of you. What a way to start the day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about my accent. There is nothing I can do about it. Um, so coming back, we'll start with uh, probably, we'll, we'll do it in the same order than the one I like to introduce the wine, meaning going from less concentrated to more concentrated. Uh, do you carry the rosé from Cuvelli Los Andes? We have the Cuvelier rosé 2018. Okay, very good. So. Before we get to the to the red, we'll start with the rosé from uh, from Cuvier Los Andes. Um, our idea here was to um, come up with a wine that would sell when it's 100 degrees where you are, where where it's summer. Because as I said, our red line is a wine on concentration, on full body wine, and uh, and the idea for us was also to to um, uh, to show our French origin, producing a very French style, very Côte de Provence style rosé. So uh, this rosé is very unique because I would say 99.9% uh, .9 of rosé from Latin America are rosé of, um, of Seigné, of Sangria. Uh, this is direct press rosé, so the way we make rosé uh, in southern France, meaning a white wine process started with black grapes. Uh, obviously, the back black grapes uh, we're using for our rosé is Malbec. So, uh, and in order to, to get it very well balanced, we do harvest about five weeks before um, our harvest for uh, red wine. So we have the right acidity, we have the right alcohol, and then it's uh, just a matter of uh, harvesting, macerating in the press, just a few hours, five, six hours, just the time it reaches its color and then slowly pressed and slowly fermented at low temperature, like a beautiful, easy drinking rosé. And so one precision for Cuvier Los Andes, uh, it's all organic biodynamic growing. For this rosé, I can even say natural wine because there is absolutely no uh, added sulfite uh, at all throughout the whole process, just 30 ppm at the bottling because obviously I'm not in control of transport. Uh, so, so I, I need to protect the wine a little bit. So I only add 30 ppm at the bottling, which is the tolerance to say natural wine. So I can say it on this wine, the rosé from Cuvier Los Andes. And as well, I can say it on both Chilean wine that you carry. So Atanea Pinot Noir, as well as Cuvée del Maule. So um, any question on the rosé? 
No, I think that's fine. Uh, why don't we uh, come back to the program? Uh, I know you want to talk about step by step with the different product, but can we uh, just go straight to uh, the project in uh, in Argentina, the way that it starts, where it's located, um, sure. okay. and and uh, well, when the, when and then the we'll we'll jump back to the products. Yeah, yeah, can be great. Thank you. All right. So, as I said, my family we own several states in Bordeaux, the most renowned of which is Leoville Poiffet. We also own uh, Chateau Le Croc, which is a Cru Bourgeois in saint Estephe, Chateau Moulin Riche, which is another Cru Bourgeois in saint Julien. And then on this picture, uh, the one on the left uh, is my father, on the right, my uncle. They decided to create, uh, to, to, to be aiming at, at creating the Argentinian cuisine of Leoville Poiffet. So they bought land in Valle de Uco in 98. And uh, so I joined in uh, 2002 and uh, well, in the end, I'm the one in charge of the world development. Um, we basically uh, maintain the very same setup than our setup in Bordeaux. So it's the same size of an estate, about 120 acres planted in production. This is the size we know to handle and the size we know to craft work. I mean, I'm, uh, uh, I strongly believe that you make a wine in the vineyard and not in the winery. And so uh, we need to be able to work with a very uh, strong accuracy, with a very low yield and very clean methods, uh, not, uh, not spraying any, anything stupid, not using any chemical, just with uh, care, love, and, uh, and, and time, we, we, we take care of, uh, of our vine to, to produce uh, beautiful grapes at very low yield. And, uh, and then the winemaking process is, um, is uh, very careful, uh, being extremely strict and maniac around the grape and then the must and then the wine uh, and, and letting the, 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 the transformation happen as uh, naturally as possible. And so, um, Carrillo Sandes was started in 98. It took us one year to um, set up the, 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 um, the wells, uh, set up the irrigation system because we are in a desert in Valle de Uco, about um, 60 mile, 80 miles south of Mendoza City at the very end of the foothill, right at the bottom of the, of the Andes. So a um, beautiful mountain that goes up to um, uh, about 16,000 feet where we are. We are right at the foothill at the end of the plateau at about 3,000 feet high. So it's a desert, it's dry, it's sunny, it's warm during the day, but thanks to both that altitude and the proximity of the mountain, it's also very cold at night. And this is why we, we pick this location because we thought all the potential was there uh, to, uh, to come up with beautiful grapes in order to produce wine that will have a very uh, strong aging potential and a very uh, interesting con concentration. Um, it, the, the location in, in Mendoza explains it all. That temperature difference from day to night explain why we get grapes with such thick uh, skins and therefore such concentration of uh, tannins, of uh, color, of flavors. And uh, if everything, uh, if we manage to ripen everything, um, it's the perfect raw material to produce great wines. And so, as I said, we bought the land in 98. We started the planting in 99. Uh, we've been planting a little every year from 99 to 2006. So it takes about 15 years, so plant reaches maturity. So we are just beginning to get a mature vineyard. If I may say, uh, Baptiste, uh, let's go back to when the program start and how then uh, Michel Roland introduced the uh, property to you and how it became Clos Siete and what is Clos Siete and what's uh, Cuvelier inside the property of Clos Siete is about. Sure. So um, at Leoville Poiffere in Bordeaux, our um, enologist advisor has been uh, Michel Roland for about 30 years. He has, um, he has become a good friend of ours and he is the one who thought of that Clodo Siete project in Argentina. Um, he 
found that uh, beautiful piece of land of about uh, 850 hectares. So how much is that? That's 16, 1700 uh, acres around there. Yeah. And, um, and uh, obviously it was too big for him to develop him alone. So he offered that to, to his friend and partners uh, in Bordeaux. And so um, Leovit Poiferre as a company said no, but among the board of directors, uh, two of, uh, of uh, the, the, the shareholders of Leoville Poiffé, so my father and my uncle that you saw on the early picture, uh, said yes. And that's why uh, we are four shareholders of Curula Sandes. All of us are shareholders of Leoville Poiferre, but the reciprocity is not true. But in the end, it's Michel Roland uh, being already involved in uh, all the vineyards of around all the world the only place where he finally decided to invest um, for himself with his own funds elsewhere than in Bordeaux is this location in Valle de Uco in Argentina. And knowing the guy, being good friend with him, we thought it would be a good warranty as far as vine growing was concerned. And it turns out to be <laughs> a safe bet because like conditions for, uh, um, for vine growing is just perfect down there. So here you have the map of the Clos La Siete. So Clos La Siete, 1700 uh, uh, acres, and you are one of the smallest block uh, inside the Clos La Siete called Cuvelier Los Andes, correct? Correct, absolutely. As I said, we really wanted to, to, to maintain the very same size of a vineyard, the size we know to craft work, the size we know how to how to take care is very, very strong uh, accuracy. And today at Clola Siete, how many of you uh, left? Uh, I know then there was so seven Clola Siete so. should be called Clo de los Cuatro because we're only four at this stage uh, and us being the smallest one. But we still, we all together, uh, the four of us, we produce uh, roughly a million bottle a year of Clola Siete. So, Basically, each of the different uh, partner uh, has his own uh, vineyard, produces his own grapes, um, harvest, make the wine, and at the blending stage, we uh, sell about 30% of our wine to a company that we own in common, which is called Colo Siete. And, uh, and so this is, uh, and, and then we blend the blend, when we make the blend in each of the winery, there is one Clolo Siete blend in each of the winery. These blends are blended all together to make sure we have the very same blend in each of the winery. And then we, each of the partners bottle its share and, and that, that's how we ensure that we have the very same wine in all the different wineries. Got it. So technically, uh, Clolo Siete is, uh, is technically a negoce or cup, cup production with a blend of all the different property. And Cuvier it's Los actually Andes. the very uh, opposite of a co-op because a co-op is like different small growers that um, make the wine in a joint facility, which usually is very big. Whereas uh, we all take care of our vine growing, but we all take care of our wine making. And then you so, do the blending. It's more intimistic. It's more the, the, the size of a chateau, of, a, of, a, of an estate. And then obviously we have our personality, Diamandes, Monteviejo and Mariflor have their own personality and that adds to the complexity of, uh, of, the, of the Clodo Siete blend. But um, are we talking of Clodo Siete or Cuvier de los Andes? No, no, no Cuvier de los Andes. I just want okay, to be sure yeah. everybody understand and <laughs> then you part of the Clodo Siete, but this is uh, an individual program. I just want to be sure everybody has a story. And also, okay. I believe you carry also Clodo Siete? As when, you introduce, when you introduce the wine to the market, it is a very important for us, uh, as my experience, selling the wine to the market, to talk about the story about Clos La Siete, Michel All Roland. Right. It's a uh, name dropping, name dropping for the people to realize that it's a serious program. And it's come from the Clos La Siete, but that's an individual smaller. Um, I believe the best of the best of the quality goes to Clo, uh, to uh, Cuvier Los Andes and 30% goes to Clola Siete Juice. That was my point. Go ahead. Okay. Voila. So that used to be the... Uh, go ahead with uh, Cuvelier Los Andes, my friend. 
So, um, curious on this, uh, obviously, as I said, the idea was to create the, the, the Argentinian cousin of uh, Chateau Léoville Poiféré. So our flagship wine, the most important of, uh, of all of our products is obviously the, um, the Grand Vin. So that's the one I like to introduce as the Argentinian cousin of Léoville Poiféré. It's a Bordeaux blend based on Malbec uh, with a particularity of carrying a bit of Syrah, but I like to introduce, in, uh, to introduce Grand Vin, first label and collection, the one you can see now, the second label as um, the core production of the winery. Um, let's put it this way. If it were just from me, Cuvée de la Sandes would only be producing Grand Vin and collection. The thing is, uh, I'm producing way more wine than what I can drink by myself. And since we sell mostly in Argentina, in Brazil, in the US, where everybody kept asking for Malbec, 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 and more Malbec, well, then we produced them. Next to Grand Vin, we produced Grand Malbec. Next to Collection, we produced Malbec. But since our focus, I'm from Bordeaux, remember, I'm all about blends, um, our focus all the blend, we didn't want to unbalance uh, what we produce in the vineyard. So next to our Malbec, we also produce a Cab and a Merlot. So that's basically how we developed our line of reds. And, uh, but the co-production, again, the, the one we're most known for are our blends. Though, uh, I don't know if you're aware of that, but we just won uh, an amazing award this year especially since uh, all the um, on-premise is down. We won the Sommelier Award for the By the Glass Wine of the Year with our Malbec 2016. I don't know okay. if you were aware of that. Yeah, we are. Oh. I will send you more information of it. So I just want to be sure everybody understand. So the Rosé is the entry level. Rosé, obviously, it's, an, it's, a, it's a different project than we start later. The uh, introduce, uh, what we do is we do collection blend, and then you have the, uh, what we call the collection uh, Malbec. So your entry level is Malbec, 100% called the collection Malbec, if I may say. After that, you have the collection blend, which is the, the little brother of the flagship of the winery, which is the Grand Vin. That's the one that you see here. So the flagship of the winery is a Grand Vin. Uh, it is uh, a Bordeaux blend. Uh, maybe you want to talk to us a little bit more about uh, the way then this Grand Vin it's made, uh, Baptiste, and uh, tell us how and why you're so proud of this wine. Well, this um, I think it's all related to, to our experience, taste, and everything. I mean, I'm from Bordeaux. I'm obviously all about blends. I think uh, uh, well-made blends will always show more complexity, more fun, more depth, more entertainment uh, than a single vital wine. Um, I'm sure that when you buy a TV, you buy a color TV and not a black and white TV. That's how I compare a, a, a blend versus a vital wine. Um, and, um, and yeah, we're known for that in, uh, in Bordeaux. And the, the whole challenge was to come to this place, which we didn't know about, with that very uh, special uh, terroir, weather, climate, and, uh, and vital that we don't know, that we forgot about, uh, Malbec. And uh, with our local staff, Argentinian um, um, wine grower, uh, agronomist, uh, and, uh, and winemaker, um, how we achieved to, to, to create a very, very uh, Bordeaux blend with a very amazing uh, um, uh, aging potential and a wine that is uh, usually in a normal year, uh, my number one seller uh, on premise, this wine, Grand Vin. Okay, so um, right now, guys, you have the 2014 uh, Cuvelier Los Andes Grand Vin, the flagship of the winery. It's mostly uh, uh, a Malbec, Malbec, obviously. And it's then you have Merlo, the Syrah and Petit Verdot. Exactly. So this is the one that is obviously the one that we really pushing uh, on some of the buy the glass on premium. And this is the one that we always show first uh, to the clientele because that's the one that we have a huge reputation for. Now about the aging, uh, 
So this one goes, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the process of the winemaking? Uh, sure, I mean, so everything is uh, harvested uh, by hand and that is true for all the wines. Uh, we have a very strict uh, selection. That's for me the, 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 the most important phase, just to make sure that we have only what we want in our tanks. So double sorting system, first by cluster, then the wines are, the, the, the grapes are distinct. And uh, we have a selection berry per berry. We use gravity to fill the tanks. And uh, we start with a cold maceration for five, six days to start extracting color, fruit flavors. And then we, um, we, we, we give up on the temperature control. So the, 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 the must warms up and the fermentation starts. Fermentation with the indigenous yeast, because as I said, we are organic and biodynamic. So we don't spray anything stupid and we have all the native yeasts that are alive in the vineyard. So these are the yeasts we use for, to run the fermentation. And uh, during the fermentation, it's maximum extraction because as I said, we, have a, we grow grapes with very thick skins in Mendoza. So it takes some extra work to, to, um, to extract what's so well stuck in these thick skins, uh, meaning all the tannin, the flavor and the, and the color. And so we also have very strict control and temperature. We do not allow a tank to go above 72 Fahrenheit because first we don't want to burn the primary aroma of the flavor uh, of, of the varietal. And then also we want to slow down the fermentation process. So we have a wider window to do the extraction. And then depending on quality and concentration of each lot of wine, well, we'll decide on the barrel treatment, roughly the the most concentrated will go to new barrel, a little less concentrated will go to one year old barrel, a little less concentrated will go to two years old barrel and less concentrated would stay in tank. And so Grand Vin, uh, it's mostly our uh, oldest planted um, um, parcels, uh, plots, but it's also our most beautiful grapes. So, um, usually it's all new barrels and for about 18 months. And also I should say that about 10%, 10-15% of the overall volume of Grand Vin, uh, we roughly produce 4,000 cases a year of this one, nine liter cases, um, is like 10, yeah, about 10-15% of the, of the wine is uh, fermented in barrels. Um, which, which also add to the con concentration uh, of, of the wine. Got it. And, uh, and since I'm making that precision, Grand Malbec, which is this bottle. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Uh, Grand Malbec, this one is a selection of our most beautiful Malbec grapes that is entirely fermented in barrels. And the aging is like 18 months? Is, yeah, as well, 18 months in new barrel. And uh, so we were um, in between the difference of uh, Grand Vin and Collection. Grand Vin, it's as well 18 months in new barrel. Collection, which, is, which comes from lots of wine that are a little less concentrated, are usually aged in one and two years old barrels for about 12 months. Okay. So I hope everybody understand. It's the three tier, pretty much. Entry level, Malbec, we call that collection, which is this label. And then we're going with the uh, collection blend, which is the entry level, sorry, entry level, you have 2013 in stock, uh, entry level blend. And then you're going to the top blend, which is the Grand Vin Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux blend. And then you're going with the Grand Malbec, uh, which is going to be uh, the 100% Malbec barrel fermentation. And then we do have also, but I don't, you don't have that yet in this market, something very special. Uh, they don't produce that every year. This is the uh, El Cuvelier Los Sunday, which is a very high, uh, the best of the best, 10 barrels only uh, of the blend. So that is pretty much the line. Uh, any question, guys, about the line? Did you have any question? I just want to be sure everything is clear. But he's trying to bring a lot of information. But the most important is to have you to have a clear idea about how to present the wine. No, I, um, I will say, to get the point across to, to our group, um, 
what was it, a year ago or more when you came to Albuquerque? And yeah. I happened to be down there that day and Katishan invited me to sit in and I'm thinking, you know, we need another Malbec like we need another vodka in this world. Yeah. But having tasted through them then and tasted through some of the wines that have come in, they're, they are really the best of Malbecs that I've tasted. And I've traveled to Argentina and I'm very excited to have them. And I think um, they really stand out by quality. Um, it really makes people pay attention when they start to taste these. Um, I've placed a couple um, in town already. Um, and um, well, people thank me for it. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, then, thank so, you, James, for, for, for your insight because there are plenty of things to say about these wines, but as you just said, the wines speak for themselves. And, uh, and then it's just a matter of knowing your customers and knowing about what they like to hear. And uh, you can mention uh, like the, the name dropping, like Bruno was selling with Leo Villepoiffere in France, with Michel Roland, the flying winemaker. Um, you can use the organic and biodynamic line. You can... Um, then the Malbec, you can use the, the ratings. Uh, there are many stories to, 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 to tell, and, and above all, the wine stand out. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and it's true that I've noticed many times that the, the, the reps of my distributor use these wine to look good with their customers, uh, to bring good wine to taste. Uh, they use them to break into new accounts especially steakhouses and independent retail of a certain level. And, uh, and they really use them as a tool. Yeah, it, it is true. And uh, most of the feedback that we got here in California and Nevada is, is the acidity level. Most of the Argentine wine that we have in the market, especially on a collection uh, a single varietal, the Malbec, has a tendency to be very flabby, uh, does not bring too much acidity. And I have to say then, uh, Cuvelier Los Andes do take care of this vinification to be higher in acidity, way more layers of testing. And I believe the people do understand by wine, do appreciate very much about the quality of the wine. And that is 99% of the time, people are just in love with the product. Also, I'm going to insist that we get a lot of repeat business. Uh, we placed this one, for example, at Cut uh, in Las Vegas, the Grand Vin, uh, the flagship of the winery. And usually this is a program of three months that we get for uh, By the Glass. This one is By the Glass has cut for the past four years uh, because the consumer is asking for it. And every time they try to take it off from the By the Glass program, they get complained and the people want to see the Cuvée de on this back. So you can count on the repeating business as well. So this is also something that we prove for all those years in distribution, then these wines drive uh, the sales back and the return in investment for your client. Uh, Josh, did you never try this wine before? Uh, I have not, no. Okay, are you excited to maybe in the very near future, you're going to test those wines? Uh, absolutely. Yes, sir. Good, good, good. good. Uh, hey, Robin, did you have uh, the chance to try those wines yet? No, I think we're getting our samples. I think we're getting them today in Santa Fe, James. Yeah, that's so, what uh, yeah, probably, was sending me. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, so I'll, probably, I'll probably take them to Taos this week on Thursday. Nice, nice. Well, looking forward to really, it. Yeah, definitely. I really hope that you're going to enjoy it. So now, Baptiste, as you can, uh, you can see, is a is a huge uh, fervent of uh, natural and biodynamic and organically growing, and that's why he also uh, live in Chile. Um, uh, he's doing back and forth with the winery, or obviously not during pandemic, but in Chile because Batiste can never stop making wine everywhere he's at. So he's, uh, he's also producing some natural wine in Chile, and that's why we're going to talk to you for a few minutes as we do have Atanea Pinot Noir and we do have Cuvée de Maole in our portfolio with you guys. 
so they are natural wine made in Chile, uh, separate than the, uh, the Cuvier Los Andes from Argentina, but it's also made by uh, Batiste. So Batiste, tell us a little bit more about this uh, oh, natural wine that you're making in Chile, uh, starting with yeah, Satania so, and then Cuvier de Maure. So, um, well, first of all, I, I, I never lived in uh, Argentina. It's uh, more than uh, 12, 15 years that I'm taking care of this project, but I am living in Chile because uh, you might have heard of Argentina. It's a very strange country. And the last thing I wanted to have is a, is a personal bank account in Argentina and Peso, which is why I, I set up uh, in Chile, which is in Santiago, which is about... Um, 80 miles on a straight line from where the winery is. It's just that it's on the other side of the border. Um, but then living in Chile, I also um, wanted to broaden the range of red uh, that I was producing in, uh, in, uh, in Argentina. As I said, I explained you the whole process, the, the, the weather characteristic, the conditions. And you've understood that um, our Malbec, our Cabernet, our Merlot, our blends uh, are big wines uh, with, a, with, a, with a strong volume, strong presence, good aging potential. And as much as I love these wine, uh, I also love other style of wine, like more easy drinking, less concentrated, uh, like Beaujolais. Like I'm a big fan of these good wines as well. And so in Chile, I really followed an opposite direction than the one, the, the path of concentration that I follow in Argentina. Um, my, my goal in, uh, in Chile was to produce one that are easy to drink, fruit forward uh, and natural. So organic, biodynamic and no sulfite used throughout the whole process, which I cannot do at Cuvier Los Andes with a long-term aging in barrels. And, their, um, and, the, and the lower level of acidity that um, I would require to make a fully uh, natural wine. So that's why in, um, in, uh, in Chile, so we'll start maybe with the Atanea Pinot Noir. This one comes from, uh, Atanea is the name of my line of product from the Casablanca Valley. So Casablanca Valley is uh, in between Santiago and the ocean. Uh, I don't own any vineyard there. I'm sourcing the plant, so I'm working with small grower. And uh, basically, I go with them to make sure that uh, they work uh, the plants, the, vi the vineyard, uh, the way I need it. Uh, so on organic manners, because there is no way I can do a, um, a winemaking without products if they weren't uh, organic. And so therefore to pay attention to, so they produce the yield that I, I, that I need. Uh, so lower yield, so I reduce their um, production. So as a compensation, obviously I, I pay them twice the market price for, for, uh, for the grapes. And, um, and so I'm in Casablanca Valley, Pinot Noir, Casablanca Valley is I think very hot to, to grow Pinot Noir. So I'm really sourcing the coolest part of the valley. So whether the bottom of the valley that uh, are on slope facing south, so opposite to the sun in Southern Hemisphere, or part of the valley where I get very strong entries of the uh, oceanic uh, breeze. And uh, then I tend to harvest fairly early and um, so as soon as I have a good uh, phenolic maturity, but really focusing on the acidity because, um, because after a stage, I cannot do any more natural wine. So that's really what I monitor when it comes to harvest. And then it's a very much uh, burgundy process. It's fermented in open vats. I'm very low on the extraction with punch down. And I even press before the end of the fermentation just to get easy drinking uh, Pinot Noir. Nevertheless, it's still a Pinot Noir from Chile with good sun, with 14 degrees of alcohol. It's not that light as it sounds when I uh, describe it. It's because working that way is how I produce a wine in balance. Balance for me is the key word. Good. And so um, that's uh, the, the, the presentation on Atanea Pinot Noir. Uh, I, you know, you- uh, on, on the- 
if I may say, I have a lot of questions from the clients. Say, what's on the label? You have different line on the label. It's a black. Yes, that's a different. Uh, we say in French, les horizons du sol. Uh, okay. How would you translate that? The layers of the soil. The layers of the soil. Yes, thank you. So it's the different layers of the soil that you see on the label. So when you see the label, it's a black label called Atanea. What's Atanea means? Um, that, that just sounds good. Okay, <laughs> that's the answer I get. Oh, with anything better. <laughs> okay. Uh, now the next uh, project that you have actually was uh, starting with uh, Cuvée de Maule. So Cuvée, Cuvée del Maule, Maule 2011. Project, this is yeah. the first one that I made in um, in uh, in Chile. So that project started with a 2009 vintage. The one you have is, I think, the 2011. It's a beautiful wine. It's probably the one I'm most proud of out of all the wine that I've made. It's a very atypical blend with six different varietals, so mostly Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, Carmenere, Carignan, Pais, and Sinso. It's uh, bottle work on most of the Cabernet Sauvignon. It's carbonic maceration on uh, Carignan, Carmenere, Pais, and then a smaller lots of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, Sinso are uh, maybe even common if I remember well. On the bottom was the name, But um, fermented in open vats, like kind of low on the extraction, and the same explanation as on uh, Athena Pinot Noir, but very interesting blend with uh, plenty of flavor. Uh, all the, the plots come from a, a circle um, around 30 miles around Kaukenes which is also the epicenter of the huge earthquake we've had down there uh, about 10 years ago. It has been an experience, my, uh, my uh, six, seven years in, down there in Kaukenes. And this one, the 2011 that you get is probably one of my favorites. Okay, so the, the, it's, uh, we get a lot of press at one point because the disaster happened in Chile. And that actually was the first year that you produced uh, the Cuvée de Maole. And we get a huge uh, press beyond because, because the story was pretty intriguing. I know you almost risked your life over there doing this first cuvee, and that's what we call this cuvee, the earthquake cuvee. Can you tell us a little bit more about the experience over there, just for the fun of it? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm really happy it happened to me once. I just hope it never happened to me again. Uh, but yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a fun experiment. Uh, we basically were um, gathering early 2010 all together, um, bringing, of course, bottle to uh, taste and share with all our friends and uh, deciding on the final blend and bottling before harvest 2010. And so that has been a very good evening. We probably went to, 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 to bed a little too late, a little too drunk. Uh, but about 40 minutes later, that massive noise and shake and move and and somehow we all woke up and uh, nobody took the time to go around the corridor of the house to just get the exit. Everybody literally like um, jumped through the window. And as we landed in the patio, um, the whole house collapsed. And uh, well, that's, that was the beginning of our... Uh, uh, 2010 harvests, uh, which we mostly made with uh, no home, no road, no bridges, no electricity, no water, no nothing. And it's been a challenge. It's been going back to the roots of winemaking because basically we had nothing but our little hands. And uh, on top of carrying out with uh, harvest and winemaking, we had to save as much as we could from the previous vintage, which was everything in tanks or in barrels and uh and uh, it's been it's been an experiment but it was the creation of uh cuvée de maori because you save some of the barrels and you decide to do the blending at the end and it became the uh, cuvée de cuvée de maori pretty much then yeah, I mean, to... that's probably why 2011 is my favorite because i had that same idea for the 2009 vintage but obviously we lost a lot of wine in that event so I had to rethink the whole blend with what we had left. And obviously that was not the, um, the, the, the result uh, I was uh, aiming at and I had anticipated before the quake. Uh, I just want to mention that. The, which is what we called it the earthquake blend. 
2010, the following year, is the one that we did just in this condition. So that's why it's called um, Earthquake Harvest, <laughs> because uh, because we, we did not even have access to some of our plot that we had been pruning and working throughout the year. But we couldn't go there and harvest because there was no more bridge. So there is no way for us to go there and 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 harvest and, and get it back to the winery. That's great. That's uh, and then I just want to. 2011, wanna... finally, no earthquake, no nothing, and that's that one should be named back to normal. And after three years, I finally made it where I wanted to be in the first place. Very well. Well, I just want to mention this little story to everyone because that's, you know, we're all storytellers and when you want to grab the attention to the client, you want to tell them when and how this new cuvee then was created. And uh, talking about the earthquake, talking about, you know, saving the first of us in 2009, 2010 was not possible to make the wine properly because the building was not rebuilt. And now 2011 is really uh, the start of this uh, exceptional, uh, I will say, exceptional cuvee, very intriguing, a lot of layers, a lot of different, uh, it's very complex, it does have a huge evolution in the glass. Uh, if for the people who do like natural wine and do like those uh, funky wine, it's one of the one and we really grab the intention, especially for the geeky, for the sommelier, for the people really looking for something different, natural made. Uh, the cuvée de Maole, it's always, always a good, uh, a good, uh, a good way to introduce the whole program of Baptiste uh, between Chile to Argentina. So to recap for you guys, because I don't want to take all your morning, uh, the, the the way that we present the wine usually when we have the whole lineup uh, on the front of us is definitely the uh, rosé to start with. Then we're going with the Atanea Pinot Noir talking a little bit more about the philosophy of Baptiste making natural wine and be very, uh, his philosophy is definitely making uh, wine from uh, organic and biodynamic grapes. And then we're going with the Cuvée de Maole to talk a little bit more about his philosophy of natural wine, but with also the sense of blending and researching for layers and researching for complexity. And then we go to uh, Cuvée de Los Andes. We talk about why uh, Cuvelier Sundays was built and how the relationship with Michel Roland and uh, Claude Lassiette. And then we present the uh, collection uh, single varietal Malbec. Oh, most can of I the say time. something there? Um, when I introduced uh, Cuvier Los Andes, I mentioned the relation with Bordeaux, the Cuvier family, uh, Léoville Poiferré. I never mentioned Claude Lassiette. I mean, unless you guys carry it as well, but if you don't, you don't need to mention it. Uh, though, just know it in case you get the question. Yes, Cuvier Los Andes is one of the four shareholder and partner within Claude Los Siete, but you don't need to 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 sell someone else wine. Okay. Uh, so, so just mention That's the story with Le Ville Poiferé and then. Okay, and then we go in with the uh, collection blend, which is really where you introduce the. Uh, uh, the, the savoir-faire, the way that they're making uh, Malbec, but in you know, a Bordeaux blend, uh, cuvee at the entry level. Again, uh, the uh, collection blend is at a very, very aggressive price. It's pretty much lined up at the same price than your Malbec. So if somebody just want a Malbec, doesn't have the manpower on the floor, they just want to get an easy wine to sell and quality wine, that would be the Malbec. But if they do have a sommelier, they try to be different and try to bring a little bit of sparks to their buy the glass program. I will definitely show them the uh, collection blend. And then if you see the interest on the collection blends, tell them that the big brother, the flagship of the winery is uh, Cuvelier Los Andes Grand Vin, which is really the recipe of, uh, of the uh, French Bordeaux producer making uh, Bordeaux Malbec base uh, blend in Argentina uh, with all the traditional and all the very uh, savoir-faire of blending the Malbec together with the uh, grapes of Bordeaux. And then you have the Grand Malbec for the people really looking for uh, barrel fermentation, top quality, big steakhouse, big wine, uh, huge potential for aging, but uh, a very massive wine, still with some layers, still with some acidity, still with some complexity and some good finish. 
Uh, and that's pretty much what the lineup can bring over to you guys. So I really hope and then all this information, and again, we're here to answer if you have any question, but we really hope then, then this morning, then you have a better idea about what you're sending. Then you have a better idea how to introduce the wine to your clients. Um, I have to say then don't be shy to present those wines to your client. Uh, you will have a huge feedback, uh, a repeat business, and we all know it's so difficult to crack those clients and introduce those wine and getting to their program by the glass on the, mon on the menu. It is also very rewarding to do it because with Cuvée de Los Andes, you can expect a, a, a good return and a consistency of the order. So uh, the introduction is the key and then you will collect the seed uh, as we all do when we introduce Cuvée de Los Andes to the market. Any question, everyone? Um, on the percentage of the pay in the, in the mall is how much, roughly? I don't remember at all. That's the blend I made about nine years ago, but it's all detail on the back label. Okay. Um, I believe it's 17%. Um, Do you make a 100% pay? No. No, I don't. I've never done so. I am not fond of them. Um, for me, I think Pais is, uh, is a very rustic varietal. It creates, it produces during the fermentation a huge part of methanol, which gives a headache, which makes it heavy. So I love it as a blending varietal, but as a straight varietal, I don't like it. It's the mission grape that we call that in California. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. The story is, uh, I think, the Spanish brought uh, Mourvel or Monastrel from Mediterranean Spain to the Canarias Island uh, about uh, 11th, 12th century when they, when they set up in the Canarias. Uh, it has had its evolution there for quite a few centuries and then on their journey from uh, Spain to Latin America the Spanish monks were sourcing the plant in the Canarias and widespread it in Argentina, where it's called Criola Negra, in Chile, where it's called Pais, and in California, where it's called Mission Great. Great, great and story on that. That's different evolution depending on the locations. Beautiful. Any other question, uh, Josh? Um, no, no questions here. I hope that was not too spread out. I hope that was uh, good enough and you have a better idea about the line so you, you know where you're going with this. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. What about yeah, Martin? Absolutely. Good. And Baptiste, great, yeah. great to have you join us. And, and uh, yeah, these are, these are gorgeous wines. I'm really. Well, as I said, uh, have fun with them. Uh, I'm very sorry that uh, I'm not here uh, with you and, uh, and uh, meet with you um, for real, but uh, I guess it won't be this year. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, yeah, I will take care of it. One and, and that will be corrected uh, as soon as possible, which obviously is not. Good, and Bruno, it'd be great to have you. I, I remember saying after we met with you a year ago, I said, It'll be great to have Bruno in the market because he'll make placements everywhere we go. I, I, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm waiting for my invitation from uh, Kachaka. <laughs> uh, if I get my invitation, you know that I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm very uh, excited to go back to the market. I'm, really, I'm very anxious to do it. So uh -huh. please uh, send, uh, send, uh, send my um, request to Kachaka that I'm waiting for the invitation and I'll be jumping on the plane and be on the market with you. Uh, I don't know who will take care of the hotels that we went together, uh, James, but uh, uh, Christian Monchard, the chef, Chef Monchard, he, he's, he's telling me that yeah. he's, he's ready. Is he still there? He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, he's actually I... in charge of all seven hotels for them. Yeah. And uh, he, ma he mentioned to me that he's ready for Cuvier de Sandes as he's a huge fan of Cuvier de Sandes. Okay. And uh, he'd, be, he'd be very much happy if you can reach out for them and, and uh, see if you can present those wines. But like I said, the chef is already sold. But if they have a beverage program, just let's take advantage of it and make those wines happen over there. All right. Yeah, I'll mention to Katija. I'm not sure if that's who's got that account, but we'll find out. Yeah, exactly. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. I hope we're not too long. I was trying to keep it to yeah. an hour. 
Uh, I think uh, that's, uh, I will send again on the last email and I sent over to you with the invitation. It was what we saw today as, slice, as the slides and the maps and the presentation were on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you prefer, I can send that over to you uh, as a photo as you can grab the information and you can print them or whatever you want to do. So I'm going to know to uh, send you over another email. I am going to send you over also this recording. I'm, I'm recording the, uh, the meeting this morning. So this way you have all the information maybe you want to share with others. And um, I will put the voice over of what we talked about this morning on the uh, YouTube channel. This way you can use that as uh, marketing tools at the POS. If you have your store, if you have uh, your wine shop, uh, then do have a TV. They can just plug it in on the YouTube and they can have the slice and they can have the voice of us uh, talking about the program if they want to or they can mute us uh, if they don't want to listen to us with a little French accent. Um, thank you so much again. I'm very looking forward to see you all in person very soon. Uh, keep strong. Uh, together we can make it. And uh, as I said to all my salespeople, sell, sell, sell and be happy. Thank, thank you, you guys. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you, thank you, much. Appreciate that. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. You too. Be well.